Welcome to Indianomics. Post-COVID, Indian economic growth has been characterized as K-shaped or growth marked by high inequality. The latest GDP data has accentuated these fears. While overall GDP growth is stunning, uh, growing by 7.3%, agriculture and allied services, which employ, you know, more than half the population, has grown by only 1.8% or at least forecast by the NSO. The NSO also says that while services has grown by an overall 7.7%, very good, trade, hotels, transport and communication and employment heavy sector has grown by only 6.3%, indicating that growth is probably getting cornered by fewer people. Again, consumption growth is only 4.4%, while gross fixed capital formation is up nearly 11%. This again raises fears that growth perhaps is not trickling down enough. However, this hypothesis has been contested by both the Chief Economic Advisor, uh, Dr. Anand Nageshwaran, as well by the Chief Economist at SBI, Swami Kanti Ghosh. Uh, he, uh, he has written a recent paper debunking this uh, argument. Other scholars like Professor Santosh Mehrotra of JNU have been arguing that growth is indeed getting iniquitous, but their argument is that it has been iniquitous for the past several decades. Today, I have with me both these experts, Dr. Swami Kandi Ghosh of State Bank of India, Professor Santosh Mehrotra of JNU. I also have with me Pranjul Bhandari, the Chief India Economist at HSBC. Uh, Soumyo, Pranjul and uh, Professor Mehrotra, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Okay, uh, well, let me start with you, Soumyo. Since uh, your paper uh, gives some data on how tax collections are showing a greater mobility of people from the lower echelons to the higher echelons. Can you tell us what makes you think that growth seems to be uh, coming along with a reasonable shift in mo uh, mobility in classes as well? Yeah, thank you, Lata, for having me on the show. I think there are two parts to this report. Uh, just let me make it very clear. The first is regarding the tax paying data, uh, which basically if we do a uh, deep steep survey, that is 37% of the formal labor force in India, formal labor force in India. And the second part also we have done is basically there's, uh, as you know, the Indian labor market is characteristic by a high informality content. There are several estimates of it, but the PLF has estimates it around 40%. So if I leave aside that, there are two parts to this exercise. First is trying to understand whether the consumption inequality across the top of the pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid is getting more worse. For that, we had actually done an exercise to find out that the top 10% of the population was cornering around 65% of the overall consumption. However, I will not get into the details. We found out that in the last three to four years, the share 65% has possibly reduced to close to 60.5%. You can call it at 61 or 60% as you like. And this is mostly the result of the programs which the government is running in terms of the social infrastructure, like the free food program and other programs. And if we and given the fact that government has already announced that it will run this program for the next five years, this share could actually go down to as much as 50%. So maybe in the next six to seven years, the bottom 90% of the pyramid could actually consume 50% of the overall consumption expenditure, which was 35% at that point of time. So I am, I think definitely it's a matter of, uh, I'll not say a matter of prejudice, but it's a, it's a matter of satisfaction, at least that the share which was being cornered by the top 10% in terms of consumption is getting reduced. Mm -hmm. So that's first thing. Mm -hmm. So this is regarding the informal part. If, uh, the second part is regarding the tax data, which is basically 37% of the formal labor force. The results are out there in the public domain. And I think here we found that there has been a great progression of income for the people who are paying less than rupees 3.5 lakhs. We found that that is number is 36.3%. The important part is that 19.5% of the small farms are also, if you look at the income tax data, are also moved out of the uh, uh, lower uh, five mm. crore category to higher. And this is, in fact, interestingly, is also substantiated by a recent table in the RBI report on currency and finance, which also shows the same thing, that perhaps the MSME units, some of the MSME units are getting bigger in terms of getting integrated to the value chain. 
We have also calculated the our other things, the average mean income, which we found a better measure than the average income okay. because average means we take off everything. And also the question on inequality, where you found that the distribution which was left, left heavy some time back is now becoming more of a normal distribution. Okay. So overall, and there are other things which I'll get into if I have time. So overall, the results show that, yes, in economics is always if growth happens, there is a concern in inequality, but some of the concerns which has been expressed continuously may be a little more overrated. Okay, point taken. Uh, Shomyo, I have some reservations with some of the data or rather some counter data, but uh, let me get to the uh, uh, guests first. Uh, Professor Mehrotra, you know, all growth is unequal. You can't take away from that because there are always people with uh, uh, differing skills. But is growth at the moment even more guilty than in the past? Is there evidence for that? I think it's... The, okay. the situation is the following. We have to look at the entire economy. And my... Uh, Quibbles with uh, my good friend, uh, Shomyo, uh, are that he's looking at a rather small part of the economy. So let's just look at what the e economy, the size structure of India's enterprises looks at. Mm. I'll come back to his argument about organized sector mm. and, and, and genie and all that in a minute. In some ways, those are the weakest. I think first your read your viewers have to understand what the size structure of India's non-farm enterprises is. Mm. There are 66 million non-farm enterprises in this country. Okay. That's what the NSS tells us. Of which no more than 30% are registered anywhere in the government. That means 70% of these non-farm enterprises are not heard about at all. Mm. They don't know any, you know, the government doesn't know anything about them. And even among the 30%, the so-called registered, mm. they tend to be registered under a variety of acts and authorities across the whole country, across our 28 states and eight union territories. So there is no collation of data so the fact of the matter is, the government of India, and for that matter, the state governments simply do not have information about the vast majority of enterprises. So when my good friend Shomyo is talking about the organized sector, mm. we are talking about an extremely tiny sliver of the entire size structure of the total enterprises. Okay. And even within the organized sector, which sort of accounts for, as he said, 37 million workers, there are regular workers who are, and there are non-regular workers, contractual workers. So let's go back to what happened in 2016. A massive ex exogenous shock was delivered to the unorganized sector of this economy by the demonetization at four hours notice. They have barely, they have never recovered from that. In fact, we don't even have data since then, despite the fact that the NSO is collecting data every year from 2019 onwards. 2019-20, okay. the first annual unorganized sector enterprises survey was done, not released. 2021, mm. another, 21, 22, another, 22, 23, another, yeah. and still none of that data has been released. So we have information from varied sources inevitably mm. that, uh, that uh, because the unorganized sector accounts for most of the non-farm jobs, yeah. and the PLFS is telling us something about that, the Periodic Labor Force yes. Survey, which is done annually, is telling us something about that. Okay that they have suffered and suffered deeply. Okay. Because had they not suffered, you wouldn't have 60 million workers having gone back to agriculture in the last three years. Okay. From April 2020 okay. to the middle of 2023, there was an increase in the number of workers in agriculture. Okay. A significant share of those have gone back from the cities and you would think that people have come back. Some have come back. 
but obviously more are joining agriculture uh, professor that Bahadra. has raised the share of agriculture in our total enterprise now uh, professor what, Bahadra, if the jobs point is are taken. not growing in the non farm sector yeah. that's the reason why people are not coming back okay. plfs data is telling us that yeah professor Bahadra, may, you know, i'll have was to poorly planned then we got a national lockdown at short, four hours notice yeah Professor Mehta, you know, I will have to get first comments from other panelists as well, and then I'll come back to you. Uh, Pranjul, what's your observation? You know, uh, we can't look at a very long period uh, in a very short show, but is there any accentuation just going by the uh, current GDP data, which seems to indicate that things are very good on the headline front, but consumption is not picked up, raising worries about whether it's unequally distributed? Yeah, I think there were very strong tones of a K-shaped recovery uh, during the pandemic period and coming out of it uh, because the bottom of the pyramid faced three shocks, one after the other. One was the lockdowns. The second was the oil price increase, which suddenly happened the year after, you know, really impacting the fortunes of small firms. Uh, and then through this whole period, rains have gotten far more erratic and agricultural production have be has become far more volatile. So all of this has played, you know, in the, on the bottom of the pyramid. So there has definitely been this K-shaped recovery phenomenon. But I would also argue that what I'm seeing in the last year or year and a half, I think there have been some improvements. You know, three things uh, to be specific. One is oil prices have come off, mm. that has been great. And I can see from the data that I track that the profit margins of some of the SM MSMEs has actually improved. Uh, their cost of production has come off. Uh, the salaries they pay you know, have gone up. Their market share has recovered, recovered somewhat. So that is one thing. The other is on the rural front. We know that agricultural production has been extremely weak in an El Nino year. Mm. But over the last year or so, construction has really picked up. Yes. And construction wages have been have gone up and they've provided somewhat of a buffer to rural consumption. Uh, I will not argue here that rural consumption is strong. It is rather weak. But to be honest, it could have been even weaker had we not got the help from a construction mm. sector. And then we find a data on credit growth. We are seeing how credit growth to small firms is very, very large. Mm. Uh, for the first time, many unbanked firms are getting access to credit. And I think all of these factors together, at least in the last one year, have made this uh, K-shaped phenomenon a little less dramatic. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Shomyo, before we take the first break, you get, the, uh, you get another uh, chance to uh, speak about the data that you have. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Merotra's point is well taken that the tax-paying uh, audience or the tax-paying category is very small in India. So, you know, it's 4.8%, I understand, of uh, the total population. So, probably, you know, even if there is a little more of mobility from the lowest category to the higher category over there, that doesn't mean that uh, there isn't inequality or a greater pain in the uh, lower, lower income brackets. After all, MNREGS demand is very high. So, would you say that that is not data enough? Uh, see, Lata, uh, I think we have to be a little more pragmatic in terms of the data interpretation. Yes, the number of taxpayers today in India is around 8.2 million. I think uh, last uh, count on 31st December was around 82 million. This number could be closer to 90 million by March 31st. But please understand that a taxpaying individual also supports a family. The family size could be of three and four. And if we take the taxpaying family as a percentage of the total labor force, mm. that is at 37 percent. So when you are making the interpretation in terms apart, not in terms of the population, but you have to see in terms of the percentage of labor force. That's that's the first thing. And the second thing which Professor Mirth was, was saying about the unorganized sector data, let us for the assume, assume that all this data is actually correct. There is a portal of the government, which is called the Uttam portal, where the SME data of the farms, which are not even registered with the banks, is getting collected on a real-time basis. Do you know the number today which has been there? This exercise was started last January. Today, this number is around 3.3 crores, and the total number of GSTN in uh, portal is 1.4 crores. So there are tax, uh, there are farms which were not registered earlier. They are actually now all this information is now available in public domain to the banks, and that actually answers a lot of questions about the India's enterprise in terms of the organized sector. Okay. The okay. other data points I'll just mention. The share of the agricultural sector has declined from 16.5 to 14.4 percent in the last 10 years. Manufacturing has increased from 51.1 to 54.6 percent. 
of 89% of which is being contributed by finance and administration. Mm. So my simple point is that growth, with growth, there is some amount of inequality, but perhaps this should be backed with data mm. and may not be with evidences. That's mm. the only limited point which I want to make. Okay. Well, there is some evidence that we, uh, you know, uh, if uh, uh, I think Sovereign Chakravarti analyzed the uh, earnings of companies and found that uh, uh, the amount of money spent, the wage cost has gone down over the past uh, few quarters. Uh, so clearly, even within the organized sector, the distribution of income perhaps is indicating some inequality. But I have to take a break. We're going to come back with more questions and answers from our panelists. Back in a jiffy.